Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sean Marie and I share all things homemaking, which includes things such as recipes, design, DIY, canning, you name it. But today I want to focus on a little thing I like to call, I can totally make that and share with you guys a springtime inspired dessert. Because I don't know about where you live, but where I live in New England, this up and down yucky winter weather really has given me the winter blues at this point. And I really need some of the warmer summer days and the promise of new growth, seeing the crocuses come up and the daffodils. And this is just yucky. It's raining, it's muddy. We've had snow and rain like 96 times in the same day. It just keeps going back and forth. And I for one have had it with it. I cannot control the weather, however, but I can bring a little of that springtime nostalgia right here into my home in the form of an absolutely delicious and classic dessert that I don't think it gets any more spring inspired than this. But before we get going with this delicious recipe, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. You never know what I'm going to share on this channel and I would love for you to be part of our little community over here. Join the party, have some fun, learn something, spend some time together. Whatever the case may be, I'd really love for you to be part of it. And if you hit that notification bell, you will always be notified when I upload content. I generally upload once a week, but I always love to throw some surprise curveballs in, such as today. And you don't want to miss any of that because you never know what it's going to be about. For today's dish, I want to share with you guys an absolute classic springtime dessert called Strawberry Napoleon. And this is an absolutely simple dessert to make. It's wicked impressive though, so if you make it for guests, they're going to be like, oh, they're going to think you spent like all day in the kitchen. And you know you didn't. It doesn't take long to put together at all. In fact, it takes longer for it to just sit in the fridge for a little bit than it actually does to put the whole thing together. So I think that happens to be a huge mama win in the form of quick and easy, super delicious, one of the best desserts ever. We are going to take puff pastry. Come on, who doesn't love a puff pastry with all of those layers of buttery flakiness? And then we're gonna add some strawberries to that. We're going to add a vanilla pudding mixture with some whipped topping. And this is actually going to be a delicious dessert. And because I'm not actually able to do a pantry challenge this year, it's it's far too hard with my daughter and her husband and the kids living here because they just keep buying food and it defeats the purpose of the whole thing. So I am still sticking to the list that I made initially of my pantry items and I am working off of that to make sure that I get that stock out of there, used up in a great way and little by little I am. Now some of those ingredients that I still need to use up is I have a vanilla pudding, that's perfect. And I actually had puff pastry pie shells in my freezer. I actually like to keep frozen puff pastry and frozen pie shells at all times. That's kind of like a staple in my house and there's no shame in my game there. So I'm going to be using some of my pantry items to actually make this dish, which makes it even better. But. For now, let's just get going with our strawberry Napoleon. So I took a puff pastry that I had right out of the freezer and I just set it on parchment paper. And what you wanna do is unfold it. Now the best thing with this is it's actually folded in kind of even sections because we're going to be cutting this sheet. So this is going to be perfect. We're gonna be able to use these lines right here as our guide. So when we unfold it, it naturally has the lines going that way, which is great because we wanna make this into six sections and I'm going to use a pizza cutter, which makes it so dang easy. I just cut along the folds the long way and then I cut once again down through the middle. So now we have six even rectangles on our parchment paper. I still have vegetable wash, I need to use it up. So I'm gonna give my strawberries a nice rinse and let them sit while we get the puff pastry ready to go into the oven. 
because you should always rinse your fruit. Again, my little $3 strainer came in perfect. Give that a nice spritz. All right, I want to make an egg wash for my dish, so add our egg. Save your eggshells for your chickens. And we're gonna add about one tablespoon of water. And we're just gonna beat this together. I love using my antique uh, hand whisks to whip up the eggs. It kind of just brings me back to being in my Grandma Sylvia's kitchen because that's what she used. Um, and I love when I can actually use those as well. And I'm glad that I have working ones in my collection because that's one thing I collect. I collect um, antique egg beaters and I love, love, love them. I will always buy them in the antique store when I see them if I don't already have one like it. And it's bonus points when they work like this one works. So I love it when I can actually use part of the past to create something now for my family. I think it's really special. So basically, I just took the parchment paper and I set it on top of a cookie sheet and I separated my six sections so that they can puff and not become one. I don't want to have to cut them, I want them to stay individual. And now we're just going to take that little egg wash we made and we're going to brush just the tops. You're not going to put this on the sides or anything, we are just going to go over the tops with it. The egg wash is what gives the pastry that beautiful golden brown. You don't want to sop it all over there, but you do want to coat each piece nice and evenly with the egg wash mixture. Then what I like to do is give them a sprinkling of sugar right on the top. Of course, sugar is best, but you can totally use granulated. You could use the colored sugar. You can use whatever you have. You don't have to put any on if you don't want. I just think it adds a little bit more to the dish. My oven has been preheating at 400 degrees, so it's good and hot. And you always want to start with a hot oven when you're cooking pastry. As always, I am going to include the link to my blog where you'll be able to print this recipe off and have it for your own kitchen files, because trust me, this is one of those delicious, amazing, easy, and impressive desserts that you will absolutely want to add to your recipe repertoire. So be sure to pop on down there, click on that link, hop over and print that off. We've got our puff pastry in the oven and it's gonna take about 12 or 15 minutes. You want it to get golden brown, but you don't want it to burn, so definitely keep an eye on it. Once that's done, we're just gonna take it out and put it on a cooling rack. But while that is going, I wanna get some pudding mixture going because that's gonna take a few minutes and that needs to set in the fridge for a little bit. It all works out, but this is where most of the time comes is you kinda let it sit for about a half hour. Let's get going on our pudding. I just have a regular 3.4 ounce box of vanilla pudding, instant vanilla pudding. Put that in there. This dessert can also be made with cream cheese. I've made it both ways, but this is what I had, so this is how we're gonna make it. This time, next time, I'll show you how to do it with a cream cheese filling. Or, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll include the cream cheese filling on the blog with the printable version for you guys for this recipe, and you can just decide which one you wanna use. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna include the alternative filling and let you decide which way to go. They're both delicious. But we're gonna use instant pudding, and this is not a calorie counting dessert in my house. You can totally make it that way. You could use 1% milk, you could use 2% milk, you could use whole milk. I like to use half and half, because it's a bit of cream and it's a bit of milk, and I just think it makes such a creamy, rich texture to the pudding. It gives it a little bit more. So I'm gonna add a cup of half and half to my package of instant pudding. And again, using my hand beater, just gonna mix this together for a couple of minutes. You wanna mix this for two minutes. You can totally use your KitchenAid or a hand mixer. I'm going old school today, so I'm gonna mix it by hand. If my grandma can do it, so can I. And 
as you can see it's pretty thick but we are just gonna let this sit for a couple minutes as well let's check out these puff pastries Ooh, those look good oh look at that look at how puffed up they are bottoms aren't burnt these are perfect look at that gorgeous all right that's done so we're going to shut the oven off all right so what i like to do is just use a regular old you know cake rack cupcake rack i have bigger ones but this one's fine and we are going to gently set the puff pastries on these and then I'm actually just gonna set this here for now keep it out of my way we want those to cool completely so they can sit over here and chill out while we finish this dish we have another step we need to do to the pudding I put our pudding in a bigger bowl um, because to that we're going to add Cool Whip. Now, um, I would have made like my own whip topping. I have no problem doing that. But one, I don't have any heavy cream. And two, we have two tubs of Cool Whip in the freezer left over from Summit's birthday that somehow got forgotten. So this is a perfect way to use up that stock as well. Shop your house before you go to the grocery store. And take this whipped cream and I am going to fold it by hand into our pudding mixture. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Do it a little at a time. You don't want to whip it, you just kind of want to mix it, fold it, if you will. Now the recipe calls for two cups, but this is something I measure with love, and love said add it all. So it's just a little more than two cups, doesn't make a difference. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's like being a kid again. <clears throat> That's good. Does it get any better than that? Because I'm really thinking it doesn't. Cover it, mm -hmm. pop it in the fridge for at least a half an hour. You can totally put this in there hours ahead of time. You could make this the night before, you could make this the morning of, use it that evening. It doesn't matter, but I like it to firm up a little, so I say at least let it sit for 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna pop it in the fridge until we're ready to use it. On to the strawberries. Strawberry stain, so I'm just gonna put a clear protector over my cutting board, because I don't wanna just stain it all up with strawberry juice. That's a little tip from me to you. I'm just going to take the tops off and slice the strawberries just like you would for strawberry shortcake. In fact, this is like the upper class cousin of a strawberry shortcake. This mama underestimated the size of the bowl I need, so I'm going to have to get a bigger bowl so I can mix this up with some vanilla and some sugar. That's not going to work. Have no fear because our tops will not go to waste. These are going to go in a baggie and they will go as treats to my chickens. They love the tops of the strawberries. We don't waste anything in this kitchen if it can be prevented. Shoko Problems 101. A stool is always required. To our strawberries, we're going to add a couple tablespoons of sugar and a little vanilla. You heard that right. Just a little, and then just a little more. Now give that a good mix. Now we're just gonna put a cover on our strawberries and we're gonna put these in the fridge as well and let them sit. We're gonna let that sugar draw out the natural juices in the strawberry and that little hint of vanilla. It smells so good and it's such an unexpected surprise. So we're just gonna let this sit and we are done until it's time to assemble our dessert. 
chocolate chips are a staple in our house, we always have some. So for this dessert, I'm going to get a double boiler going on my stove. I'm just going to melt up some of these chocolate chips. And it's another great way to use up some pantry inventory because I don't even know when I bought these. I'm not going to lie. And a pan of water. I'm going to set another one right on top. I'm going to put my chocolate chips in. And I'm going to add a splash of half and half. Not much, just a teeny bit. I'm just going to let this melt down. And get it nice and smooth, perfectly smooth for our dessert. I'm going to shut this off. The chocolate is perfectly smooth and melted. I added a little bit of cream. It just helps to make it a little bit more fluid because I want to drizzle this over the top of our delicious Napoleon dessert. I'm going to leave that sitting there and we're going to get our dessert underway. It's going to be done before you even know it. You can take one of our puff pastries and we're going to cut it through the middle. Use a serrated knife and go right through it. Oh, look at that. How good does that look? We're going to set the top aside and we're going to work with the bottom. Start by putting a nice big layer of that pudding whipped cream mixture on the bottom. Don't skimp. This is delicious. Then add a layer of those delicious strawberries that have been sitting creating their own juices with that unbelievable vanilla flavor in there. I like to add a, another dollop of whipped cream and then we're going to pop the top back on there, pushing down, squishing all that yumminess together. Now I'm just going to take some of that chocolate sauce that we melted up on the stove and just drizzle it all over this dessert. How good does that look already? I'm going to add a nice little dusting of powdered sugar to the top, a little dollop for garnish, and a couple mint leaves to make it pretty. And there you have it. How easy was that? This dish is absolutely delicious in the epitome of spring and summer. When I think spring and summer, strawberries definitely come to mind. So on dreary winter days when the winter blues have got you down, this dish will pick you right up, and it's so easy. It took us no time at all to make this. Now, we've got to have some of this. Mm. That sugar brought out the amazing natural juices of the strawberry, and that slight hint of vanilla that we have in there is so unexpected and delightful, it really makes this dish. You have all of these flaky layers. You got to have some. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. Flaky, buttery, airy. That vanilla pudding with the Cool Whip mixed in there is absolutely dreamy delicious. It is like heaven in a cloud. Does life get any better than this? Because I'm really thinking it doesn't. I think it's safe to say that everybody was pretty happy that I decided to surprise them with this dessert on this very day. It is a family favorite. It's one we do enjoy, but it's even better when they have no idea that it's on the dinner menu. Um, and it definitely does bring a little bit of that springtime happiness back into our home and i hope you guys will try it um, this is emery's first time trying it and i would have to say it's an absolute hit she wants more and so won't you so be sure you hop over to my blog and print this recipe off so you can have it for your kitchen collection as well because trust me your family is going to want this this is the elevated cousin to the basic strawberry shortcake, and it is a phenomenal dish that you just really need in your life. You don't know you need it in your life, but you do need it in your life, and I'm telling you, you need it in your life. Right, Summit? See, even Summit says yes.
Well, thank you so much for joining me again today on another episode of I Can Totally Make That as we made a classic strawberry Napoleon on this dreary winter days to bring a little bit of that springtime anticipation right here into our house. If you haven't yet, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and become part of our little community here. And if you smash that notification bell, you will never miss an upload because, come on, do you really want to miss food like this? Because I don't think you do. Thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Let me get back to this. <laughs> mm. That's good.